it was really it was very exciting in the sense that um, so it was great that we had the guidance to work with the administration. Mm -hmm. So as I mentioned, doc, for me, Dr. Marsha Genzer was significant in kind of being um, a sounding board and um, you know help us with um, secure finances to you know go to San Francisco State and um, out to San Francisco to do research on Asian American studies programs out there. Mm -hmm. Um, but then, you know, when you're trying to create a movement, it has to be grassroots usually. I mean, to really, I think, create that, that firm base. Um, and so it was amazing. Like I we had to reach out to the LGBTQ, um, you know, the Latino students, I mean, everybody, Jewish mm -hmm. students, it did, you know, even the Greek, uh, the Greek, oh my gosh, is a Greek, it's not Greek, Greek life. yeah, Greek yeah. life, I mean, so it was just everybody, mm -hmm. so that was, I think, um, as I remember, I thought it was very important that we, you know, talk to everybody, mm -hmm. um, so they could really understand how it could relate to them, or does relate to them, so I thought we did a great job at that time in, um, you know, communicating the importance of an Asian American studies program. Yes, we did the whole chalking, do the hunger strikes, and um, you know those types of things, and holding the East Coast Asian Student Union Conference, which was really big for us. Um, I mean, it drew thousands. Um, you know, to to focus on Asian American um, issues. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was a pretty big accomplishment at that time. Um, and I just remember the, in the beginning, like having Dana Tysoon Burgess to do dance. You know, you have Phil, Dr. Phil Tijitsu Nash, you know, doing history. We had, um, I guess, Dr. Sangeeta Ray. I mean, you just have so many different perspectives within the Asian American community. Um, it's, it's key to, be able to tap into those resources mm -hmm. and make those resources available mm -hmm. to you know students, faculty, and the greater community. And there's, uh, I don't know the exact probably demographics of Maryland in terms of University of Maryland, and then just the com the immediate community in terms of um, what the percentages are. Mm -hmm. But they were at that time 14 percent. There was a newspaper. I think we called it 14 percent because it was representative of the Asian uh, demographics at that time on campus. So, I mean, that's a significant amount. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. Great. Um, so, if you don't mind, uh, we're going to rewind just sure. a little bit and kind of work Yeah, absolutely. That. So, um, so, going back to, I think, your like, grade school experience and coming into college, um, were you aware of your ethnic identity? What was the relationship that you had um, with your ethnic identity, um, sure. especially, you know, going to an international culture. Right. Um, and then coming back to American culture um, and then moving into college or in high school also. What was that like? So I'll kind of I'll probably jump around all over the place. But I think, you know, food is obviously a connector. Um, so Chinese food, you know, that my parents cooked. Um, you know, they played mahjong with their friends. Um, and, I, you know, I want to say in terms of a, in a negative way, it's just probably students in school using derogatory terms. And um, so I think that was kind of a negative, you know, I, that's when I started to kind of feel some of the negative aspects of being you know, Chinese or Asian, and um, that, you know, that obviously... Were you called those yeah, terms? Yeah, like chink, you know, sure, mm -hmm. I'll, just the, the standard <laughs> um, terms that, you know, people would, um, or just like the ching chong with the silverware, those jokes, and, um, and I just kind of, you know, I just disregarded it. I didn't really do much about it. Um, and I also remember with my nose, um, you know, at least in Western culture, like it's nice to have, it's, 
you know, it's looked upon nicely to have like the high bridge. And so I felt I didn't have a bridge. So I couldn't wear certain glasses. And I remember putting a clothespin on my nose to see if I could like hire the arch up here. Um, so those are some of the maybe earlier um, types of things that I had recognized about being Chinese or being Asian, but it was mainly surrounding, surrounding food. Um, and my parents did speak Chinese at um, home. And we celebrated Chinese New Year, but it wasn't, it was more, it wasn't so elaborate. Um, but yeah, it was very, I would say it's, it was very on the, on the outer shell. I mean, it wasn't so intense. So it was there obviously, but I didn't think too much about it. You know, it's like you're mm -hmm. born into it eat Chinese food, you know, and that was kind of my extent. I didn't think too much beyond um, that level. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you're, um, sorry, if I, um, yeah. and so, uh, and were your parents first generation immigrants or were, were they, um, were they also Chinese American? No, they were first generation immigrants. They came over for graduate school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they were both um, from China. Although my mom, she she had to her family had to um, escape to Burma um, and so she I would say she grew up in Burma so and then went to Taiwan for university and then came here for grad school but originally born in China and I think her formative years were in China um, and my dad was he was always in China yeah okay. great um. Also, if you have any questions, yeah. you can jump in. One question. So yeah. going into college, what sure. did you want to do? What was your major? You know, what did what was the degree you uh, actually graduated? So I graduated <laughs> with women's studies, okay. but that took five years to okay. get there. But I did the traditional my parents had always thought I'd be great at social work. Mm -hmm. I did not go in that route because I felt I, I was not emotionally cut out for it. I felt, you know, it's a very um, just emotional draining uh, field and I don't think I would have you know be able to survive the longevity of the you know long term so I wanted to do pre-med not that that sounds like that's any better but I think I was like oh I want to be like everybody else and do pre-med but that didn't last very long so mm -hmm. then I did business and I changed around like five times um, what did you mean by everybody else um, I'm sorry, what was that? Or, when I, um, like when you say everybody else, um, was that referring to anyone in particular or just? Oh, uh, I just think, you know, like growing up, you once again, like the traditional stereotypes. And, and then I don't think there were also th stereotypes. I mean, you do see a lot of Asian Americans being there and perhaps East Asian mainly, maybe back then, but um, being doctors and lawyers and, you know, the white collar professions and engineering so I think maybe I had wanted to gravitate towards that um, but I wasn't like I wasn't brought up very strict you know I wasn't um, my parents weren't very strict surprisingly um, they weren't yeah they were quite casual and chill and um, and so I think sometimes I wish they were harder on me but I didn't even break a thousand on my SAT so that was like you know, it was awful. That was just devastating. Um, I think they didn't, they tried to avoid that in conversations when I was in high school. Um, so yeah, so I think they wanted me to do social work or they had, they didn't, they just suggested that they said, you love people. This sounds like it'd be a great, you know, track for you to explore. And perhaps there was that some of that, I'm going to do something my parents don't want me to do. Um, so I just kind of tried to do your traditional like pre-med and everything. that did not work. That was not me. So I eventually, um, I think after two years or three years, I switched into women's studies and that was, um, that was transformative. Um, cause just like Asian American studies, you start to really dive deeper into you know, women's history, some, you know, the challenge that women, I mean, you really, you know, drill down on 
on so many levels that you weren't thinking about women. Yeah, you know, I wasn't thinking about women at all at any phase in terms of like historical, uh, political, economical at all until college. So, um, and I think that was the case for you know Asian American studies. Um, it just never crossed my mind until it was presented to me. Um, yeah, so. Um, so, okay, um, so one of the things that you mentioned was that, um, when you came into college, you right. started, um, being in proximity to many Asian American groups, mm -hmm. especially you mentioned Asian American women. Right. Um, could you expand more on that experience and, um, what that, uh, like what that meant for you at the time? Sure. I mean that, um... It wasn't, and I would have to say it's just men too, Asian American men. Um, it's just that it's very, if you put yourself in that community, just like any community you put yourself in, it's very saturated. And so it was very different from what my upbringing was in terms of high school. It's very, um, I don't know, there weren't that many Asian Americans, maybe a handful that I remember in, in my class. And so then to be surrounded by or have the option to like immerse yourself and just be around people that look similarly to you or at least within the Asian American, um, you know, community and being able to um, share similar stories, even though they're, you know, we're of different ethnicities. Um, learning about Korean food or Indian food or, you know, whatever it is, um, just having that exposure um, and just hearing similar experiences. And I guess in terms of women, I had done my, I think, my senior paper on Asian American lesbian organizations and to see if they Kind of do an analysis or a critique to see what was their impact in the Asian American space and the greater community and how impactful um, were these organizations. Um, and so, yeah, I think it just gave me a pathway to learn about different communities um, that just you know, I just didn't have that before. So I think, um, you know, I didn't think about Asian American women on any sort of, you know, deeper level than just, oh, you're my friend or, you know, but so in the university setting, you just really got to, um, you know, understand those issues. Um, and I think at a very, um, detailed level understand the challenges different communities face um, and I think that struck a chord with me because I at least for me I wasn't thinking on that level you know whether it's mental health um, or if it's you know food in a you know food inequality um, immigration I mean none of those issues ma mattered to me when I was growing up or you know, especially even in high school, my senior year, um, it was all, all in college where these, these issues heightened um, my awareness and my interest in being able to understand how it relates to the greater, um, you know, community in the world. Um, so, yeah, so that's pretty amazing. Um, so what led up to the formation of was and like the group of students that sure that you were with at the time how did yeah. um, how did you all come together and um, what did that look like so i think i mean i mentioned christina lagdameo earlier but I, we were in a class together and and we, what year was this? i was probably i was a junior okay. so i was 95 I, I think don't quote me but <laughs> I'm so bad with math but I want to say 95 because I got burned out so and then I didn't do anything really my last year mm -hmm. but um I mean there's like Shuen Oh there's Betty Wong there was you know Cookie Ponya um Tone Nguyen I mean there's this 
like missing probably tons of people. But um, yeah, there was like, I think we were in a class and just clubs and just talking about it. And I think it just sparked, um, it just fueled like a, a bunch of us to want to move forward. And we were excited, I think about, you know, other programs at other universities. And I think really um, understanding like, wow, I, I think for me at least the number 14% really stuck with me because that's a significant percentage of, a, of any population. And, and I think understanding at that time there was not a formal program. You had all these other programs. Why did we not? And, and, a, and there was also an East, East Asian uh, studies program. So I think, you know, having this kind of awareness and you're like, where's our place um, in the in the future? You know, where, you know, we want to be able to um, ensure that um, 20 years, 30, 40, 50 years, you know, indefinitely, um, the work that we do, and also not just currently, but just in the past, there's still probably a lot of um, historical um, events or, you know, just that haven't been explored yet mm -hmm. and that need to be. So, um, you know, from that perspective, you need to have that longevity.